The Apple Watch is the reason why I can't switch from an iPhone. Now, that's a big statement, I know. And I think there are a lot of other people out there who own an Apple Watch that feel the same way. The Apple Watch Series 4 is the latest version of the Apple Watch, and it's the one I've had now for over six months. In this review, I'm going to go over what I use my Apple Watch for, some of the best features of the Apple Watch, and how the Apple Watch has held up over the past six months. Now, while this video is mainly about the Series 4 version of the Apple Watch, if you're looking specifically at an older version of the Apple Watch, a lot of things I talk about in this video are going to be applicable to your use case. Why get an Apple Watch? That's the question Apple had to answer for people way back in 2014 when they released the first version of it. And they didn't quite know back then what all the main use cases were going to be for this thing. Today, it's become much more clear that all of the features for the Apple Watch can basically be summed up into three categories, information at a glance, notifications, and fitness. First, let's talk about information at a glance. When Apple first launched the Apple Watch, they spent a ton of time talking about making a very precise timepiece. And they delivered on that promise. The Apple Watch is one of the most precise timepieces that you can wear on your wrist today. But what really makes the Apple Watch shine is its watch face options. There are quite a few to choose from now, from picture slideshows to animations, watch faces with tons of complications to specific watch faces like the one celebrating LGBT pride. Apple has always done a good job at making tools that allow people to creatively express themselves, and the Apple Watch is no different. Once you select a watch face, Apple lets you customize the complications, the colors, etc. If you're unfamiliar with what complications are, they're just the bits of information that you can put on your watch from the date, heartbeat, sunset, current temperature, workouts, etc. Personally, I use the watch face that includes the most complications Apple could fit onto a single watch face. It's exclusive to the Apple Watch Series 4 thanks to the 20% larger screen that the Series 4 sports, and being able to glance down at my wrist and not only be able to see the time, but my activity level, when the sun will set, the current weather, temperature, and much more is more useful than it would first appear to be. After dinner, I glance down at my watch to see when the sun will set, and then I'll be able to see if I have enough time to go out for a walk in a nearby park. I'll look at the weather in the morning to decide whether or not I need to take a jacket into work. At work, I'll look down at the watch at the calendar complication to be able to see what my next meeting is, and I do this all throughout the day. And then finally, when I want to stroll out downtown to go pick up some lunch, I'll check the current weather to make sure I don't need to take an umbrella with me. Now, this watch face is more function over fashion, but it, it's still pretty fashionable. In my book, it is. The self-expression doesn't stop with watch faces, though. The Apple Watch is probably the most visible Apple product you could own. So Apple gives you a choice to express yourself through different material finishes the watch comes in. Now I personally chose the stainless steel LTE version of the Apple Watch. You can't actually get the stainless steel without the LTE anymore. The main reason I got it was I wanted the sapphire display on my watch. Sapphire is a much harder material than the Ion X glass Apple puts on its standard Apple Watch models. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a scratched screen. And I haven't seen any scratches on my Series 4 or even the Series 1 I had before it, which also had a sapphire display. The Apple Watch only has two buttons. You can press the digital crown to go back, Hold down the digital crown to wake Siri. You can press the side button to confirm purchases with the Apple Watch. Press the side button once to bring up a card stack of your most used Apple Watch apps. Or double tap it to bring up your card and use Apple Pay on the watch itself. Now that we've gone over information at a glance, there's a second way that you can actually get information on an Apple Watch. And that brings us to our second category of the main core features of an Apple Watch, which is notifications. Pretty much any notification that you can get on your iPhone, you can get on your Apple Watch. Think of it as a way to filter out notifications from your phone. 
You can customize the notifications to get different taps on your wrists so you know whether it's something important like a message or not as important like a news story notification. Ever since getting an Apple Watch, I've noticed that I pick my phone up less and overall I ignore notifications that are not as important to me. And when I do pick up my phone, I'm not bombarded by all of these notifications I just don't have time for. Another thing I like with notifications is that with some of them, you can respond to them directly from the watch. Get a text message, you can scribble or dictate a response right from the watch. Get a phone call, pick it up on the watch. Most of the time I ask people, do they know what I'm talking to them on? And they say, uh, your iPhone? And I'm like, no, it's actually the Apple Watch. So the audio quality with the Apple Watch, especially the Series 4, Apple did improve the speaker on the Series 4 as well as they moved around where the microphone was. And the audio quality on the Series 4 specifically is really good. All right, I've saved the best for last. Let's talk about fitness with the Apple Watch. This seems to be one of the most common drivers for why people get an Apple Watch. It tracks your steps, miles walked, can help you track running workouts, biking workouts, swimming strokes. It can help you do lifts at the gym. It's a really useful tool to get a snapshot of your overall physical activity. Now the main way the watch helps you track your overall activity is with three activity rings. The outer pink ring is the move goal. It's the total calories you burn per day because of movement. You can set this goal yourself to challenge you to be more active, and it's a feature I found myself using often. The second ring, the green ring, is the exercise ring. You need to complete 30 minutes of moderate to intense exercise a day for that ring to be completed. You can take a brisk walk, ride a bike, or run. Whatever way you exercise will typically count for this goal to be completed. Now the last ring you need to complete is the stand ring. To complete the stand ring, you need to stand up and move around for at least one minute per hour for 12 hours a day. Now the reason why the stand ring exists is this is based on studies from health experts who say it's good for people to get up, stand, and move around throughout the day for at least one minute per hour. What this does, it's trying to prevent people from going into a sedentary state where their bodies burn less calories. That's at least the ideas behind why the stand ring exists. Now, if you, like myself, work in an office environment where you're sitting down at a desk for eight hours a day, this can be really useful because the watch will actually give you stand reminders. So if you've been just heads down doing work and you're just so concentrated on that, you forgot to stand up, move around, the watch is going to help remind you to do that. In my experience, I was very skeptical at first when I got an Apple Watch. I am not someone who is gamified into changing habits just to fill in three little rings on a watch face. However, Apple does a very good job. They give you achievements, they give you little rewards, just like a little graphic that comes up when you did a, a seven workout week. Uh, they do a very good job to keep you engaged and make sure you're keeping active. And just being able to see the rings on the watch face every time I glance down at the watch. If I do not complete all of my rings by the end of the day, it does not matter if I worked harder than I ever have worked before. I will still feel like I accomplished nothing. And it really does, at least in my experience, it has totally changed my behavior to being very vigilant about filling in those rings. If you're not really self-motivated, but you're motivated by peers, Apple makes it very easy to actually share your fitness goals and share your activity performance with friends if you are motivated by competition with others. In my experience, the tracking has been quite accurate. I've compared the distance the watch says when I'm on walks and I pass a mile marker, and it's pretty dead on accurate in my experience. Now, some other sensors that the watch has that are also pretty accurate are the heartbeat sensor as well as the fall detection sensors and the accompanying software. It's already been credited with saving people's lives around the globe and it's an important health feature. The Series 4 watch can also detect irregular heartbeats as well as perform an EKG, which is pretty legit. Now, before we wrap up the review, there are a couple more Apple Watch features that I thought were worth mentioning. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now, starting with theater mode. You can turn this feature on so your watch display doesn't turn on when you're sitting in a theater. 
If you want to peek at the time, just turn the digital crown ever so slightly and you'll see the watch slowly fade in to a very low brightness setting. The Series 4 is waterproof, so if you get it wet and need to get water out of the speaker, swipe up from the bottom of the screen, select the water drop button, and turn the digital crown until the watch starts buzzing and the speaker starts beeping, and you'll start to see water being pushed out of the speaker. Another handy thing from the watch control center is the ability to ping your iPhone if you don't know where it is. You can control any media playing from your phone with the watch, including audiobooks, podcasts, and of course music. This is really useful when you're cooking and playing media on Bluetooth speakers in your kitchen. The Apple Watch also comes with an LTE version, which means that you don't have to have your phone with you when you want to go on a run or go for a walk. You can play music, Apple Music, or songs from your iTunes library. You can download some of them to your watch and it'll play on wireless earbuds like the AirPods or you can also stream podcasts over LTE with the Apple Watch as well. You don't just have to get a Series 4 to get the LTE version. You could get a Series 3, they also have LTE, and both LTE versions also have built-in GPS, which will help you track your run routes if that's something you care about. Lastly, you can use the watch to unlock your Mac, which works for Macs made at least since 2016. When the Apple Watch debuted almost five years ago, it seemed like Apple didn't quite know what people would be using it for. Fast forward to today, and the Apple Watch can do so many things, there isn't enough time in a review to talk about them all. It's become a versatile tool with numerous use cases for very specific activities. And if you happen to partake in those activities, once you get one of these things, you'll never want to be without one. That's the magic of the Apple Watch. Thanks for watching our review of the Apple Watch Series 4. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos about more tech products like this one. Also, let us know what you thought of the review and the Apple Watch Series 4 in the comments below. Well, thanks again for watching. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder.